This is Matthew Cratter from Trader University, and today I want to talk about Bitcoin, bank robberies, and lollars. And in case you're wondering, that is actually a combination of dollars and lollars. It's a real thing that you're going to learn about in this video. So Hollywood is full of movies about people robbing banks and some very glamorous stories about this, but I've never before heard a story about a man robbing a bank to get his own money back. But this is indeed what happened in Lebanon recently, where this man went in with some weapons and some uh, petrol, threatened to light himself on fire, took some hostages. And what he was trying to do was just trying to get some of his $200,000 worth of Lebanese pounds out of the bank in order to pay for his father's medical bills. He's being hailed right now as a national hero. There are all these people outside of the bank standing, applauding what was happening, because again, he was robbing the bank to get his own money out for a good cause. So this is the background for this. Back in March of 2020, when the world was falling apart, the Lebanese central bank defaulted on about $90 billion worth of sovereign debt. And this led to the collapse of the local currency, the collapse of the Lebanese pound. Sometimes people call it the Lebanese lira. Uh, they seem to be fairly interchangeable, at least in English. So the Lebanese pound collapses, and then all the commercial banks where people hold their deposits began to impose capital controls, which have continued for the last two and a half years. So right now, if, if you have money in one of these banks, whether it's US dollars or Lebanese pounds, you can only withdraw a small amount of money every month, like a very, very small amount of money. Unfortunately, this is how every fiat currency ends. If we take a look at the conversion rate from Lebanese pounds to US dollars, we can see that it's really been steady since 2018. It's this fixed exchange rate, but this is very misleading because this is not where the actual uh, the ex actual exchange rate is. This is actually this is just where the government says it is. So the official government rate is this number of pounds, and then you have all these different rates. But what I want to focus on here, you have obviously have parallel market rates and black market rates. But what I want to talk about here is introduce this idea of the Lawler. The Lawler is a, de a deposit denominated in U.S. dollars in the Lebanese banking system. It is a nominal balance stuck or frozen in the Lebanese banks with currency value simply as a computer entry. The Lawler is not a tangible currency, but it is a concept of an outstanding deposit in U.S. dollars in Lebanese banks that can only be withdrawn in Lebanese pounds at a very reduced set rate. So the Lebanese pound has lost massive value versus most of the other world's currencies, especially versus the dollar. And this is, or especially versus the US dollar, I should say. And this is the problem here. And this is one reason that the banks are holding on to the money. If you're finding this video helpful so far, I'd just ask you to hit that like button and also subscribe to the channel if you haven't done this already. So the first thing that comes to mind when I read stories, news stories like this, is the repeated comments I see in the comment section of my YouTube videos. People always saying, and they're still saying this, they've been saying this for five years, Bitcoin is a worthless technology that has zero real world use. You still see this comment, it's becoming a little bit less frequent, but I wanna put it in the context of people all around the world, in people in Turkey, in Lebanon, in Zimbabwe, in Venezuela, in Argentina, and increasingly coming to uh, probably the EU and eventually to the US because this is how all fiat currencies die. But we have Bitcoin as being used as a very useful tool. So for example, here is someone who is uh, a Lebanese American who sends Bitcoin to his cousin in Lebanon as a way of sending a remittance, remittance and he doesn't have to pay the, the outrageous Western Union fees. And he also doesn't have to worry about the bank confiscating the money and not giving it to, to his family in Lebanon. There's a story that we talked about earlier this year as well, all these examples of Ukrainian refugees fleeing to Poland and fleeing to other parts of Europe with Bitcoin on a USB drive or on a hard, hardware wallet. So there are these, these cases. Satoshi was very much aware of this. And this is the famous quote, which I think we can't really read enough. This is uh, Satoshi Nakamoto talking in, uh, I think, the Bitcoin talk forum. The root problem with conventional currency is all the trust that's required to make it work. 
The central bank must be trusted not to debase the currency, but the history of fiat currencies is full of breaches of that trust. And I would say that when a bank refuses to give you your own money back, that's a perfect example of it. Banks must be trusted to hold our money and transfer it electronically, but they lend it out in waves of credit bubbles with barely a fraction in reserve. We have to trust them with our privacy, trust them not to let identity thieves drain our accounts. So again, this is something that Bitcoin is very good at fixing and dealing with. With Bitcoin, you don't need to rob a bank to get your own money ba your own money back. Your Bitcoin cannot be frozen by commercial banks and it can't be debased by the central bank simply because the supply is limited and the central bank doesn't have a money printer for Bitcoin. But in order to take advantage of these these features, these characteristics of Bitcoin, you do need to hold your own private key. So you don't want to leave your Bitcoin on Coinbase. You obviously don't want to leave it at a place like Celsius, either the past Celsius or whatever is going to be the next Celsius. You need to withdraw that Bitcoin, put it on a hardware wallet like a Trezor or a cold card and hold your own private keys. If you have to ask someone permission to move your Bitcoin, you're basically like a Lebanese bank customer where you have to go on bended knee and beg them for your money back or do something more violent. Not your keys, not your coins, but you can secure billions of dollars worth of value in Bitcoin using just 12 magic words, which are called the recovery seed. And I made a whole video about this if you want to learn more about private keys and recovery seeds and how Bitcoin wallets work. It's very important though to make sure that it's Bitcoin in your wallet, the Jennifer Garner ad about what's in your wallet. If what's in your wallet is USDC, which is a stable coin, Circle can easily freeze it. If what's in your wallet is Ethereum, you better make sure you know how to run your own node, which can cost tens of thousands of dollars a year to do, because what happens in the Ethereum ecosystem is you have big companies like Infura and Alchemy and MetaMask deciding what you can see on the blockchain and blocking access to various things. So the blockchain is still there running fairly freely, but if you don't know how to access it and if it's all if it's all uh, cordoned off by these large corporate uh, these large Ethereum corporations, there's really nothing you can do about it and you're forced to trust them. I like this idea of the Lawlers. I think we at some point we're going to have to replace the word US dollar with Lawlers, especially when the Fed is back and turning on the money printing machine because fiat currency ultimately is a joke. It's not a joke for people who've been hurt by it. It's not a joke for people in Lebanon or Turkey or Zimbabwe and eventually in the US, uh, but it is it is a, uh, a shadow without substance. This is what fiat currencies are, and this is something that Bitcoin is here to remedy. If you found this video helpful, be sure to hit that subscribe and like button. Hit the notification bell if you wanna be notified when I publish my next video, and let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.